Rick, with regard to the hearing yesterday to unseal the affidavit used to get the warrant to search President uh, Trump's home, if you could just for us uh, clarify for our viewers, what is the affidavit in relation to the warrant and will it actually tell a story? Well, it, it, it will tell a story. I don't know that the story will be any different than what we, we already know, that this is an abuse of power and it was a broad, broad warrant that uh, frankly falls closer to a writ of assistance under the English that uh, caused the revolution revolution in the first place. If you go back to our early American history, I'm not sure how much will actually be in the affidavit that would give any teeth to the claims that they're making. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, I, I think it's worth fighting for and it's worth getting out there. Um, but I, I think the bigger picture here, what, what really, in my opinion, is, is actually encouraging is that by going after Donald Trump in this way, they're exposing what they've been doing to ordinary average Americans like you and me for a long time but it never gets any press or it never gets out there. We just assume that somebody was guilty because the FBI went after them. And when, and when I mention these writs of assistance, I think this is so important for people to remember. All the way back to 1761, James Otis, who was kind of like a, I guess you could call him a grandfather to the American Revolution instead of a founding father, but he was really the inspiration. John Adams said after he gave a five-hour speech, James Otis in 1761, five-hour speech against the writs of assistance, John Adams said that's when independence was born and it grew up 15 years later into adulthood with the Declaration of Independence. But his whole speech was about how evil this is, that you would give these broad search warrants, essentially, where you could go in and find anything against anybody. And we know from what the Soviets used to say, you know, show me the man, I'll show you the crime. I mean, my goodness, anybody in America is, is according to most of the, you know, the studies that have been done out there, probably committing about three federal crimes a day that they don't even know that they're violating. So this is incredibly dangerous for the whole country, not just for whether or not Donald Trump gets to run for president. Sorry for the long answer, Steve. I'm kind of fired up today. No worries, Rick. I mean, to your point, uh, this isn't just any judge either. Uh, this is the same judge who approved the warrant. He also appears to be a Democrat activist based yeah. on a social media post. How much of this whole thing could be calculated f through a political lens, uh, especially with the midterms coming up? The whole thing, you know, that, that that's the thing. I mean, th this is why it's so unprecedented. We've never allowed for political prosecution at the, in this way or persecution, use either, either word, right? And, the, and it's easy to tell. You can tell whether it's political persecution or it's actually blind justice, you know, because you got one side right now saying nobody's above the law and you got the other side saying, wait a minute, this is this is politics. What's well, real easy to tell. Are we treating everybody the same? Is it actually blind justice? If Democrats did exactly what Donald Trump is supposedly have done, did the FBI go after them? And the answer is, of course, no. And we've seen this in so many other areas as well. But that's the simple test. Are we treating everybody the same? That's what blind justice and equal justice is all about. And that's my real fear here is that we're losing that concept. We're actually acting like it's OK to go after the other side. As long as you're going after the people I hate, I'm OK with the FBI or whoever's doing it. That's a real dangerous road to go down. I think what you said is exactly the right the right view of this. It should all be seen through a political lens. Look at all the players in this. Look at even at the top with Merrick Garland. I mean, this is a guy that Donald Trump prevented from being on the Supreme Court. Once Donald Trump was elected, Merrick Garland's hopes of being on the Supreme Court were gone. This is a guy that called parents domestic terrorists because they didn't want their kid to be groomed at school or their daughter be raped in a bathroom because of the president's horrible policies on the whole gender fluidity thing. So, I mean, it, it's politics all over the place. It's ugly. It's wrong. I don't think it's going to end up hurting Donald Trump. I think it's going to end up helping him, but it's going to hurt our justice system overall. Rick, that's what I wanted to ask you about next. What are the long-term impacts uh, from your uh, perspective on our institutions and specifically the Department of Justice? Lack of faith, man, lack of trust. You know, when you get to this point where, um, you know, people just almost laugh when, when they hear um, somebody from the FBI or from the Department of Justice stand up and act like they're fighting for for truth, justice in the American way, like the old Superman comics. I mean, at this point, you just you you see that and you you say, no way. You've proven yourself to be biased. You've proven yourself to uh, to do things that that should not be done. Uh, and that's not to disparage every, every every FBI agent out there. It's just like when you say, you know, there, there, there's always a bad cop or a bad teacher. There's always a bad FBI. I mean, there's we're human beings, so there's going to be corruption. There's always going to be problems. We don't paint everything with a broad stroke and say it's all bad. But at this point, I think we have reached a point where the Department of Justice has become so politicized and the FBI has been willing to be used as a political tool. 
I think Congress has to look at starting over, uh, either dismantling completely and starting over or saying we're going to have a, a, a very thorough investigation and clean sweep of this agency. Rick Green, always appreciate your insights. Good to be back with you.